you know, and you've obviously been working a long time to get to this moment. Now, like the fight week, it's it, it's got to feel like reality at this moment. I mean, what's the emotions for you at this point? Um, I'm excited. You know, it's been a a long, long, long time coming, a long road, and um, I've been here now two weeks with my team, and I'm just excited. It's been, like I said, uh, I I was number one. I told these guys a long time ago, and now here we are, two days out, three days out, and I'm I'm excited. You know, I mean, obviously, we talk about the first fight, but it was so long ago. I mean, is there any factor at all? Like, is there anything in the, whether it be mentally, psychologically, anything that you take from that first fight that benefits at all? Um, For me, no. It's just a, I look at it as a brand new fight, a brand new opponent. He's improved. Um, I have improved. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's two different fights. Well, first fought, I was only doing um, martial arts for like four or five years. Um, I'm, now, I'm now 30 years old. This is my fourth main event for the UFC, and um, this is two different fights, and I am excited to go out there and prove to the world. We know the run of bad luck that you had with the fight cancellations, with the no contest, with all that stuff. I mean, was there ever any point along the way where you're like, this journey's stupid, like I'm done with it, like I'm not doing this anymore? Um, you have them days, you know, you have ups and downs, you have days you think, oh, like the why me days and stuff like that, but you have to refocus your mind and let's use that time to get better and better. And um, all this week, I was feeling like belonging. I feel like this is how it's meant to play out. This is how, this is where I'm meant to be right now, you know? And, um, but yeah, like I said, at the time, it was frustrating having pullouts and <laughs> getting COVID and it was just a mad, mad two years, you know? Now we're here. What's the most important part of this? I mean, is it is it about becoming UFC champion and that alone, or is it about some extraction of a measure of revenge of the guy, the last person to beat you? Um, all of it, all of it. You know, obviously he was the last person to to, to get a decision over me seven years ago. Um, but number one is to be world champion. Cause I know how much it means to my team and to my family and to me and um, how hard I've worked to get here. You know, and so number one is to become world champion. The interesting part about this, right, is your grappling has gotten way better. His striking has gotten way better. But at the end of the day, what kind of fight do you expect? I mean, do you think that he'll want to come out and strike with you? Do you think he ultimately just reverts back to his Yeah, days? yeah, probably, probably. If if I'm if I was him, I'd I'd come out and try and wrestle. You know, um, I think he's gonna try to come out and strike. Um, you got to think like he was a wrestler for his whole life, and to now he's getting like finishes. You know, fall in love with it. It's natural for for that to happen. You know, but. Um, I am just leaps ahead of him when it comes to striking. Um, he's, he's a good wrestler, but I'm a good mixed martial artist. I can put it all together. Great jiu-jitsu, good grappling. Um, so mm, we'll see. When I, when I picture the fight in my head, it all, all plays out different. But when you do fight, it never plays out how you picture it. You know? <laughs> so we'll see. Right. Last thing for me. I mean, Saturday night, you raise that belt. I mean, what does that moment mean for you to be world champion? Like, what does that represent for you? Um... Everything, you know, just, it'd be a congratulations to myself as well to, for sticking through um, these ups and downs, sticking through these these hard times and everyone thought, oh, Liam got bad luck, <laughs> you know, and um, just being proud of myself for, like I said, sticking through it and going through it and for my family, for my team, um, it would mean everything. Leon, a lot of talk about Kamari's status in the history of MMA. Dana says that if he wins this, he could be considered the greatest of all time. I'm curious for you, do you think he could be the greatest of all time or do you think he's the greatest world of all time? Where do you see him in history of MMA? Um, I don't know. I don't know. He's a good fighter, you know. He's, but I think to be the greatest of all time, I consider people like John Jones. And you have to be good at everything. You can't be good at just wrestling or... You have to be good at everything, you know, but he's definitely, he'd be in a conversation if it, if it, it well, you're not going to beat me, but <laughs> he'd be in a conversation, you know, so fair play to him. Do you think it's easier for you to kind of ignore all that stuff because you've been in there with him before and you know he's just human and it's not this crazy thing that you're, you're not expecting? Um, yeah, for sure. Like all this pound for pound and all this, I just don't see it. I don't feel, I, I didn't feel it in the fight. I, did, I, did, I don't see it. I don't see it in his, um, his techniques. I just don't see it, you know. He's a very good fighter. He has improved, and um, I'm not going in this fight blinded, thinking, "Oh, this is a, another wrestler again." It's not. Um, but yeah, I just don't see the pound for pound thing. But on, fair play to him. On the flip side of that, do you think the more he hears that, the more overconfident he could become? Yeah, it's natural. 
in natural. Like that's what he's talking about now. Is pound for pound. The man that wearing the, the suffering t-shirts is, is just, he's, he's he's loving it, you know. So like I said, he's yeah, he's, he's earned it. So I'm not gonna sit here and hate on him, you know. So uh, fair play. There's no risk of you stealing his outfit ideas at the press conference nah, this week. Nah, that's not 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 me, you know. <laughs> Terry Crews, <laughs> he's sick. But um, nah, fair play to him. Yeah, a quick one right here. Uh, you said your league's ahead of Camaro in terms of striking. So would you put yourself at the top of the list of best strikers in this division overall? Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. When it comes to striking, uh, in the top five, like who is it? When it comes to just pure striking, you know, um, Mustard out. That's probably the other three. Gilbert Burns, Kobe, and Masada, his last three fights. He, he probably put him as the best striker at them three. And he's the shit striker, you know what I mean? So it's like, um, him, and Kobe, him and Kobe fought, just two wrestlers that decided to have a boxing match. When I don't know what the fuck Gilbert did. He just came out and just swung for the fences, gassed himself out and got knocked out with a jab. You know what I mean? So it's, um, I don't know. He's, I'm just leaves ahead of him when it comes to striking. Can I get your thoughts on uh, Anthony Joshua's fights also fighting on Saturday against Usyk? It's a big, big, big night for the uh, for the UK, you know, to have. Um, and we're both going into rematches, which is crazy as well. Um, it's, I think we'll go out and get the win. You know, also I'm hoping for, to, hoping for it to get the win and it's going to be a massive night for the UK. And who do you have in the Eubank Jr. Conor Ben fight? Um, I'll probably go Eubank. I think it'll be too big for him. I know they put like a, like a re-adjustion clause on it. But I think it'd be too big for him and it's too early for, for Connor, I think. Would yeah. you ever like to see oh. a, a... Leon, just back here a second. Down in front of you. Oh. Would, would you ever like to see a rehydration clause in MMA? Do you think that's something that could work? Um, No, computers find way, ways around it anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I know guys that, like, like boxers, like they'll do that. They're like, yeah, I'll do it. Then they'll make the way in the morning. In the morning... Or they'll they'll, they'll rehydrate fully and then sweat sweat in the morning, we're weighing and so it's like there's all the ways around it, you know. So uh, I don't mind. Leon, um, Dana White told Yahoo Sports yesterday that if you win this fight, uh, you guys are going to do a I'm trilogy. pound for pound for win the fight. I should pound for pound. <laughs> Go on. But he said uh, this would be an instance where ahead of time he'd be fine saying Kamaro deserves a rematch or a trilogy fight. Is that something you've thought about that you not only would have to beat him Saturday, but back to back? Yeah, for sure. 100%. Like you say, he's been a, he's been a dominant champion, you know, so naturally in sport, boxing or MMA, when you, when, when you defend about a couple of times and been, been dominant, you normally get a rematch. So I definitely envision doing it again. And I mean, what would you want the timeline to, for that to be? I mean, like if you beat him badly and he's out for a while, would you want to fight someone else probably and you know be active? Um, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. I, I, I want to be an active champion. You know, I don't want to be one, once a year. I want to be active. You know, and like, I'm only thirty years old, so I'm going into my prime now. So I need the more fights I have, the better off it will be for me. And uh, I know you've talked about the Diaz versus Chimaev fight a fair bit. I'm just curious from you as a former opponent of Nate, what do you think, if this is his last fight in the UFC, his legacy is in this company and the sport? He's a solid motherfucker. You know? he's, like the Diaz brothers, they, they, they are who they are. And that's what I, what I respect about them. They, they haven't changed over the years. They, they are who they are. They're solid. They're tough. Um, I remember, I remember, I remember watching them when I first started MMA, you know, and, um, so I think they're going to have a good legacy, both of the brothers, Nick and Nate, you know. Leon over here, to your left. Uh, Kamar's been on interviews talking about the first fight, talking quite a bit about the first fight. Do you think maybe because he's doing that, he might be overlooking your tiny bit at least? Um, He's talking about everything apart from this fight. He's talking about going up 205, fighting Canelo, doing everything apart from the fight. You know, I, I am solely focused on becoming a world champion and, if he thinks it's going to be like the first fight, he's already lost the fight. I've erased that fight out of my, out of my mind a long time ago. And if he thinks he's the same kid he's in the fight, then huh, we'll see Saturday night. And you thought of maybe, maybe you know, let's say you win on Saturday. Uh, you call it Canelo yourself? Nah. Oh, I, need to <laughs> I know I can't beat Canelo in a boxing match. I'm not deluded. You know what I mean? This guy is deluded. You cannot beat Canelo. I know it's a payday thing, but... 
boxing for boxing, you cannot beat Canelo. MMA, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll win. Um, same MMA, I'll beat Canelo, but for a pure boxing match in the, in the square, I, I'll, you'll probably win. That's just honesty. I'm not deluded. Um, it is what it is. Right. And you've been waiting quite a while for a title shot just in, to begin with. Now you've been out since June last year. How hard has this, been, this weight been for you to finally get to this point? Um, it don't feel as long, you know. I've been off for like a year before during the pandemic, and um, I've always said I don't believe in run rust. I don't believe in nothing like that. I think as long as you you live the life, dedicate yourself um, to the sport, which I do, um, you should get the results. And Saturday night, I'll get the result. Leon, Leon, on your right. Uh, I believe you said that you've been out here for two weeks. What's the what's the advantage of coming out to Salt Lake City and being here for that long ahead of the fight? Um, just you get climatized a bit better. You know, normally UFC brings you out on like the Tuesday or the fight week. There's not enough time. when it's, In the UK now, it's like seven hours ahead, you know, so I'll be like falling asleep and shit. And, um, you don't have time to make weight and climatize to the air, to the time zones and everything. So I like to come out. I do for all my fights. I like, I like to, I pay with extra money just to come out early with my team and, um, I don't be comfortable going into fight week. I don't want to feel like it's rushed or I'm not I'm not having everything that I need, you know. Hearing from NBA players who come here and play the Utah Jazz, we hear from them that the elevation is an issue in, in terms of their wind. Has that has that been something that you needed that extra time to kind of get used to? Um before everyone was talking about the elevation. So like back home I was, I was like sleeping at sea level, you know, I had like a mad tent over my bed for the last two months. Um, like sleeping in it and but when, when I came out I, I couldn't tell no difference it felt same you know I know the studies on it is not um, it says some people might feel it some people might not you know and when I, since I've been training I just feel like I'm back home in Birmingham and this is the uh, first numbered pay-per-view that the UFC has ever brought to Salt Lake City what was your reaction when you found out that you know rather than fighting in Vegas or Los Angeles or wherever that you'd be fighting in Salt Lake City Utah uh, first of all, I didn't know where it was. You know, I was like, "What? How was that?" I, was like, I asked my manager, "What? When, when you're a kid, you picture like your first UFC title. You always picture somewhere massive, like it's gonna be in Vegas, it's gonna be like New York, and somewhere like dramatic, you know." But the win is the, the title is the title. No matter, no matter where you put it, I'm, I'll become world champion. So either it is. So not to look past your current opponent, but say you beat Usman, say you beat him again in the trilogy. Who's up next? Is it Kamzat? Is it? Are you wrapping up Jorge Masvidal? You know, do you have like a preference? Well, my preference would be obviously um, Jorge. Obviously, he needs to go back and get a few wins, and then I love that one to happen in the UK. You know, um, to have it back in the O2 where, where, where the incident first happened, and I think it'd be a great style for the UFC. It'd be a great, great revenge for me, and so. But at the moment, I think both our careers has gone in two different ways. You know, I'm going there, he's going there. So it's difficult to make it make sense. But that would be my preference. And then what about Kamzat? Kamzat, him as well. I was meant to fight. We got matched up like three, four times. <laughs> um, so that fight will, will, will happen when it's meant to happen, you know. All the way back here to your right, Leon, wanted to ask what it means to you after so long to finally be here fight week. You had been looking for this title shot for this rematch for so long and so many delays. What does it mean to just be here finally this week? Um, it, mean, it means a lot. You know, it means a lot to my, to me, to my team, um, to my family that I, I, I stayed the course. You know, um, you know, it was that I mean, but I, uh, do this, do that, why you're not fighting. I was trying to fight, like, during the pandemic, I matched up with Hamza, with um, Masalo, the whole lot, you know, and um, so it, it, it would mean, it mean a lot to me, and it means a lot to me that I'm here now, and we're just days out from me becoming a world champion. I know how much it would mean for the UK, for me to capture it about, you know, to be the second guy from the UK to do it, and how much it mean to my team and, and to my family, you know. And is there a satisfaction with just being able to get back to being active at this point? Um, yeah, for sure. Like I said, I'm only 30 years old. I can't be um, sitting out much longer. You know, I need to be active and 
after after this fight, after a win, I'll be looking to fight again this year and just stay active. Thank you. Leon, what have you learned about yourself since your last fight with Kamaru seven years ago? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've, I've just learned more. My belief in myself was correct. You know, that you, what you think in your head, like that you're, you're good enough to be here, that you, you are, you know, and I think that's what I've, I'm most, most proud of myself for my mentality that I've got, not just for, for MMA, I got it from life and what life has taught me, you know, so I'm proud of my, my, my mentality that life has given me. Yeah, I need, I need this. It's water loaded. <laughs> <laughs>